Now we take another 3D printable project for a spin. Get it? it it's spinning. This is the 3D printable rotating display table by Mike Chargoff. I found it on Thingiverse and it looked like an interesting build. The display table is a fairly easy print, the motor is very inexpensive, and if you have a 3D printer with some PLA plastic, you can do this whole thing for under $5. So now you know what we're going to build, let's get to the build and I'll explain why I built it after. Here are the parts you're going to need for this build. You'll want to print a large base, the large worm gear that goes on that base, the display table that goes on that worm gear, a USB cable that you can hack up and use for the power, this is a 6 volt motor, so I'm going to use the red and the black wire. The worm gear, you can either print it whole, standing up with supports, or you can print it in two halves and glue it together. You'll need a motor for this build. I'm using a GM20 motor. It has this really cool little transmission on top. You'll need five legs for the turntable. You need seven rollers for the table to spin on. It's easier to print these in half and then glue them together, so there's 14 roller pieces total. Roughly 10 M3 5mm screws, a motor mount for your motor. These are the tops that hold the worm gear in. We might not need these, but I printed them anyway. The 3D printer washer he provides, two M3 8mm screws, a clip for the USB cable, and if you want to use the light that he uses with this project, you'll need a cable clip for that. I'm not using that light, but I will put it in the description. First, we'll take all of our half roller pieces and we'll glue them all together. I just put a little dot of super glue on each one and rolled them around on my fingers until they were set. Try not to glue them to your fingers. This is what the rollers look like completed. Now take your main base and press your rollers into each one of these holders. You'll probably need to spin the rollers around a few times to loosen them up. Now that all your rollers are on and spinning, you can put your large gear on and make sure it turns freely. You can take it back off for now. So now we're going to take our USB cable and we're going to use the red and the black leads for power. USB is around 5 volts and this is a 6 volt motor, but everything should work just fine. I need the motor to turn clockwise, so I'll actually have to hook up the leads backwards. So the red lead will go to the negative tab and the black lead will go to the positive tab. There's the motor soldered and cleaned up a little bit. Now we need to attach the worm gear on the motor shaft. There is a flat spot inside the worm gear for the motor shaft, but you almost have to super glue this to get it to be tight enough. Before you glue it, use your motor mount and your base to make sure the worm gear is lined up with the motor. Even if you have to take it apart again, this will make sure the worm gear is nice and straight. Attach your motor mount on your motor, snug it up with one of your M3 5mm screws, Snap your worm gear into the base, then select two of the holes where the motor fits best. You want your motor shaft to go pretty far inside the worm gear, but not pressing on the worm gear. You want there to be a little play. I decided to go with a third set of mounting holes. Now you can fix it onto the base with two of your M3 5mm screws. There it is attached onto the base. Now let's test the motor out to make sure it's spinning the right way and it's spinning freely. I recommend you use like a phone charger or something like that rather than your PC, just in case something gets crossed you don't want to burn out your USB port. And it looks like it's turning pretty freely. If you need to clear some of the support material out of the worm gear, you can actually use this as like a little mini lathe to help clean it out. Just get your file in there. Now let's test the main gear to make sure it's spinning freely. It jumps a little, we could probably use a little cleanup, but so far so good. Once you're satisfied that the worm gear and the main gear are cleaned up enough to spin smoothly, let's pull the main gear off again. Let's use our small cable clamp on our USB cable to give us a little strain relief. We'll use an M3 8mm screw. Cable clamp on. Now let's attach our legs to the base. They tell you to print five, you could probably use a few more, you can just spread them out evenly on the base. I'm going to use M3 5mm screws to put these on. Now the legs are attached. Now you can put your large gear on for the final time. You can fix it with your 3D printer washer and an M3 5mm screw, but it doesn't need to be tight. It still has to spin freely. I'm going to attach the worm gear keepers on the top. 
with some M3 5mm screws. At this point, you can use the larger clip and add a USB light on the bottom. I didn't go for the light because I didn't think I really needed it, but it does add a pretty cool effect. You can see on the Thingiverse page what the light looks like. This is the light he uses in the project. Finally, we'll add our display top. It just sets on the arms of the gears. Let's plug it in one more time to give it our final test run. There you have it. The USB powered turntable. So why would you build one of these turntables? Well, personally, I'm always on the lookout for cheap 3D printable projects. And this build can't be cheaper. For under $5 US, that's all the parts you'll need if you have a 3D printer and some PLA plastic laying around. This is a great project for the starting makers. They want to build something, but can't spend a lot of money. Plus, it's really cool. A big thanks to Mike for creating this. I encourage you to go check out all his things. I'll leave all the information in the description below, and leave me comments about how your projects went. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts below, and as always, thanks for watching.